Our next speaker is Bill Swearingen. Bill Swearingen is a hacker from Kansas City. Bill has been coming to DEF CON for a long time. He is a veteran of the Alexis Park. Yeah, and all these new people. Um, but just because he's been coming here, he hasn't ever spoken, be spoken before. But believe it or not, a lot of you may have felt the influence of Bill Swearingen before. For example, if you drive past a construction information sign and you think every single time that should say zombies ahead and I know how to do that, that's this guy. If you live in a non-major metropolitan area and you have a hackerspace or have been to a hackerspace, that is in part this guy. He, co he helped co-found the uh, Cowtown Computer Congress in Kansas City a few years ago. What else? If you um, have come to a little thing that we call SecKC, which is the world's largest and the greatest monthly InfoSec meetup, that's this guy. But probably the, the, the largest reach that this man has had how many people in here are either still drunk or hungover <laughs> off of booze that somebody else paid for? Yeah. These are my friends, yeah. This guy is the, uh, is the uh, better looking part of uh, DEF CON parties. Yeah. DEF CON PARTIES! <laughs> so, this is Bill's first time. This is a banger of a talk. I've seen this thing before. You guys are in for a real treat. Give my friend and yours, Bill Swearingen, a big welcome to DEF CON. Hello. Yeah, so, uh, Juris, thanks for that great introduction. But so, and what, uh, you actually mentioned some of the things I want to talk about. So, this is my 15th year at DEF CON in a row. And, and so, and, and last year I decided it's time for me to start giving back. And so, those of you that, that uh, have attended and those kind of things, I, I you know, I would say that you do the same. Start giving what back to our, uh, you know, to this this community. Okay, so who's ready to hack some cops? Yeah! Okay, so I'm going to tell you <laughs> that right away th this talk is illegal. Okay, and, and and it's illegal in all 50 states. And and so uh, I am a little nervous being in front of you all. And it's and it's it's uh, not a little bit not about speaking in front of you. It's not really about the legality of the talk. Uh, it's really that I run with the Sec KC crew and they're pretty wild. Um, and, and I see the, a lot of them right up front here and I'm a little bit nervous of what they're going to do. Um, and so as I'm, as I'm thinking about it, right. So this morning when I was thinking, okay, how's this gonna go? I realized that there's probably gonna be a few times in this talk where people yell, Bill, you suck! And, right, and so about 50% of those times I expect that those might actually be my friends, so just take that, take that as it is. I don't think that guy was my friend. <laughs> Okay, but I, I am serious. So some of the things that we're gonna talk about today that if used are a federal offense, okay? And so what I'm here to do is just kind of talk about it and explore it and explain how they work, right? And I'm gonna try and do a good job and explain what is a good idea to do and what is a bad idea to do, to do but I'm gonna leave that up to you uh, for your own interpretation, okay? Um, and, and also, I, I do realize that the talk that I'm about to give is very US-centric. Um, and so when we talk about the technologies that are used and the laws uh, that, that we will break, um, they're, you know, they're, they're US. But so for those of you that, that traveled a long way to get here uh, to, to attend DEF CON, um, I think that the technologies will, will uh, translate pretty well, um, but do a lot of your own research about your own laws and, and, and go from there. Okay, so given, given the topic and the nature of this topic, um, I'm not exactly sure if I will or will not get arrested during this talk. Um, and so I, I, have, I have consulted with my attorney and everything like that, and so, but I figured just in case, it'd probably be good to go ahead and post the slides up, up right now. Um, and so there they are. And I want to give a shout out to Seth Casey. Let's hear it one more time, Seth Casey. All right, um, next, if anybody has any questions after the talk or whatever, please see if I am in jail, and if I am, bail me out, and I'll be happy to answer any of those questions. 
So Benson already kind of talked about, I've been in this space before. Um, so about 10 years ago, I owned a website called iHacked. And, and one of the things that I re released was a device that would trigger uh, the emergency preemptive devices that would turn streetlights green. Right. Um, and it was awesome, man. It was really cool. We'd be driving around, you know, just like it was green lights all the way and you can go as fast as you want. Um, and I got a lot of attention about it. Um, I, I got interviewed uh, by, you know, a lot of a lot of different media. Wired was one of them. Um, and, and I thought that was that was pretty cool. But um, so I, I learned I've I've grown since then. You know, that was 10 years ago. Um, and I've learned a few things first. Um, you know, you you really probably should consider talking to the media about committing federal offenses, right? Um, that, that, was, uh, that, was, that was not, you know, that didn't actually work out very good for me. Um, and, and also it was really interesting, the, the quotes that came out of that, right? So, so I was giving a very technical uh, you know, interview to, to Wired um, you know, and talking about 555 timers and the way that, that we can interact with, with the preemptive devices. And my quote that I got was that I'd take the highway to work, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, but, but more importantly, right, um, don't talk publicly about committing felonies. All right. So it turns out that it is a felony to, to sell, buy, or use a MERT, um, you know, so the preemptive device, uh, punishable by up to two years in prison with a maximum fine of 10K, um, or both. Whew. So, well, I'm out of jail, the fines are paid, so let's do this again. All right. So here's the thing. Uh, I am a hacker. I've always been a hacker. I'll always be a hacker. Um, and when I think about what, what that means to me and why and how I ended up this way, you know, I, I really do think it, it, you know, it really kind of goes back to, to my dad, right? So my dad was an engineer. I mean, he spent the time with me as I was growing up to, to, to question and, and try to understand and, and explain in the way that, that things work in our world. Right, um, and, and just question how it works. So I, I've spent my life, uh, you know, very curious, trying to understand uh, how do things work and why, right? And 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 how can I make sure that that I am in a position that I can influence those devices to to make my life better, right? Um, so I want to take advantage of my world in any way possible, and and I think that as hackers, this is our game that we can win. Um, so before I get started, um, I do want to read an excerpt from the Hacker Manifesto real quick. Um, and it, it says, and it just clicked off, but it says, I'll, I'll paraphrase here. But yes, I, I am a hacker and my crime is that of curiosity. Uh, I do not judge people by how they look, but what they do and what they know. Right, and so and I think that really is a good ethos as hackers to have. Um, and, and, and I hope that our community stays strong that way. Okay, please. If there are any local or federal law enforcement in the audience, please raise your hand. And, and, and I understand that that, that that might not be, you probably don't want to do that, but, I, but it's for a reason. Um, so, so first, I, I'm going to be using some audience uh, uh, participation, and, and you do not want to be selected as that audience member. So any, any local, federal law enforcement, please raise your hand. Okay, I got a couple. How about any undercover? Any undercover? Uh, okay, you're right. Yeah. So I, I, I can't believe that worked, um, but, but I do believe that I just won Spot the Fed right there. Um, okay. But uh, really, really why I want to do that is I don't want to live in a society without laws. I, I really do respect what you do, um, your mission, and, and that's not the point of this talk, right? Um, and so I, I don't want you to feel like targeted or, or, you know, or anything like that in this talk. Um, it, it's really about the technology and understanding and being very curious about how that works, okay? Um, and, and I will tell you, for, specifically for those that, that are in law enforcement, there's going to be a couple slides in here where you get a little nervous, um, and um, it's okay. Like, uh, just uh, trust, trust me. We'll, we'll get through it together. Um, I, you know, and 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 everything's okay. Uh, so what we're what we're talking about, um, it just gets right up to that spot, um, and then I stop. So uh, trust me on that. Okay. So story time. Um, I've always also been a speed junkie. I mean, if you take a look at some of the things that we've done, you know, when primitive uh, traffic lights, those kind of things, just always kind of been a speed junkie. Um, fast cars, motorcycles, et cetera. Um, I love them, right? But what I don't enjoy is all the speeding tickets that go along with it. Um, and so uh, a few months ago, I'm sitting on the side of the road um, with some blinking lights in my mirror. Um, and I started thinking, like, 
what is radar? Like, how does this work? Um, how, how, can, how can I outsmart this? How can I, how can I take advantage of, of my position to make sure that, that I'm going to win this game? Um, and an interesting thing is, uh, I, as I'm sitting there, I thought about a story my dad told me one time, and this goes back when I was very little. Um, he, to, he told me that, uh, that, that he had some friends that were taking apart microwaves um, and, and using the magnetron in the microwaves to, to, to jam radar. Um, and, you know, and as a kid, I, I didn't really understood what that meant. I didn't understand how that worked. I didn't really understand. But for some reason, that, that stuck with me, right? So that, that little, that story that, the, that my dad told me, it stuck with me. And so as I'm sitting there, I, I decided, well, I should probably figure that out. Okay, so it turns out um, that, that radar wor works just by measuring the Doppler shift of sound waves. So we've, we've all seen that before, right? We, we've heard that sound, and, and, and probably everybody here under, has, a, has a very basic understanding of how radar works, right? We, we know that a signal is sent, um, it is reflected, and it comes back to, you know, to the, the sending device, and it, and it measures our, our speed, right? Um, and and what, what's really interesting is when you start looking at, at how, like how does this work? It's actually very basic, right? So when you take a look at, at the Doppler shift um, and the way that, that we measure that, um, what we can see is that police use high frequency radio waves, and, and they're actually microwaves, uh, actually, to, to bounce off objects. And then they measure the shift using this equation in the, in the return frequency to, to measure the speed. Um, now, what's really important, and I'll keep calling this out during this talk, but this is a very important point here. Radar measures speed, okay? So, so what does radar measure? Come on, tell me. Speed, speed. okay, that's very important and you'll understand here in a little bit. Um, and, and so, and, and here you can, you can see the equation, but basically um, you, know, you, know, you, can, you can read that they measure the, the change in frequency over the sent uh, frequency and it equals two times the velocity of the target over C with constant of time. Um, and now that I, rec I, you know, I do understand that now that I've shown the math, we can kind of all go home, right? Because everybody understands what we're going to do, right? I, I, I get that, okay. Um, but, okay, so let's shift gears a little bit. Um, and, and before we start hacking, let's look at how police use radar. Um, and, and I do want to say I apologize for the, the quality of, of this, uh, the, the image here, the video here. But 100% of the police polled uh, would not let me film them radaring people. Um, and they started asking a lot of questions, and so I left. I found this one on YouTube, okay? Um, but one of, the, one of the really neat things about RF radar um, is that the officer could kind of just set it and forget it. Just look, look at the video. It's just sitting there. Uh, it's radaring the cars as they go by. Um, and, and, he, and the officer doesn't have to do much, right? Also, what's incredibly neat about RF-based radar is they can drive while they're doing it. Um, we've all been radared by, by police uh, you know, passing by those kind of things. And what's neat is the way that these radios work is they're transmitting this frequency and they're receiving signals back from multiple objects, right? Um, the, the device can determine its current speed by the reflections that are coming back from stationary objects like trees or signs, right? Or, or, or you know, other station buildings, other stationary objects, um, and then calculate the speed of the moving objects based off of that. I mean, some, some of the more advanced radar systems that police can use can even track multiple targets and even show which lane of traffic that they're in. Um, I just think that's really cool. Um, you know, I, I think that that's very interesting that the way that this technology works. Um, and as, as we really start to dig in um, and, and understand, okay, what is, what is happening, um, you know, with, with our radar, this, this slide is also very important. So a very tiny fraction of the signal sent is actually reflected back to the police radar system, right? The, the rest of the RF signal continues to, to go on, uh, bouncing off of trees, um, can, uh, scattering, off, oops, scattering off the car, um, you know, but, but it continues to, to, to go. And that's, that's really all I'm trying to show in this slide is that it's just a little tiny fraction of what is sent that, that's returned back. Okay, so. Expand. 
Ooh, I forgot about that one. Sorry, audio guy. Um, so police radar, it really comes in three uh, major forms. And, and you guys all probably know this, right? So, um, but this slide, if I were to take a picture of a slide, it'd be this one. Um, and you'll understand why. But, but X-band X was kind of the, the de facto back in the day. Right, um, so it's kind of like the the older uh, the, the the older radar systems that, that really aren't used much um, in in today's. Um, next is K band, um, and believe it or not, K band um, is is used worldwide, and it but it is the most commonly used radar in the United States. Um, so it, if if you were to take you know if you were to take a, a poll, K band still remains the default radar system. Um, it's also classified as the grocery store band um, because those are, it's the same frequency that, that the doors um, at grocery stores use. And so um, if any of you guys have radar detectors and seen false alerts, it was likely K. Um, KA is, is the new, um, the, the, the new multi-mode version of K. Um, it's the, it's the emerging system. Um, and, um, I mean, it, it's definitely in use uh, around. Now, just uh, there's also the KU band. Do I have any KU, any people from KU? All right, so, so KU band exists, but no one's ever paid a ticket for that. So, right, um, yeah. Um, actually, KU band is, is, uh, is the European KA. So for anybody in Europe, I have the, I have the, signal, or the frequencies there. Okay, so does everybody at least have a basic understanding of what radar is? Okay, um, does anybody remember what does radar measure? Okay, thank you, that's very important. I really only wanted to, to make sure that that point was driven home. Okay, so it's time for a live demo. Okay, um, what should we not do at DEF CON? Live demos, but we're gonna give it a shot. Okay, so I do wanna take a volunteer up on the audience, and as I was looking across, one person's kind of sticking out. Um, I have, sir, would you please join me? On stage. Oh my God. That's the other half of DEF CON parties right there. Okay, so what we're going to do, um, the demo that we're going to show is that I'm going to uh, give our Mr. Police Officer here a radar gun. Um, I am going to walk towards him and I am going to return the same frequency that he is sending to me, which should indicate that I am standing still. Okay? Then I am going to slightly adjust the frequency sending uh, and I will stand still and I will indicate that I'm moving. Um, and, and I realize that I don't have any good way of, of demonstrating this to prove to you uh, that this is happening. So you're just going to have to trust me that this wasn't all lies. Okay? Is that good there? Okay, so I have two different versions of radar guns here. One just commonly off the shelf um, radar system and a Hot Wheels one. Um, the, the, it turns out the Hot Wheels one was a little bit easier to modify for my needs. Um, oh, and if there are any people from the FCC here, um, I, I've got, you know, I, I want to tell you that, uh, that uh, it, it's all good. I, I stayed within the legal limits. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so the first demo is going to be you holding down the button, radaring me. I am going to return the same frequency to you, um, and, and hopefully, if all goes well, you will not get a reading. Here we go. Okay, you ready? All right. We believe you. Okay. Now on the second, the, the second demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly adjust the frequency of this gun. Um, and what, what I'm doing is now using the, the Doppler shift because I know the exact frequency that that gun transmit, I'm going to return a signal that says I'm going a certain speed. So 111 miles an hour. Are 
right, you want to do one of those? Yeah, sure. All right, it is 5 o'clock somewhere, right? Okay, this is where it gets good. Oh, man, that was good. Okay, so can we do the same thing to police radar? Yep. We could build a device um, that, that says and transmits that we are always going 65 miles an hour. Okay. Um, since we know uh, the vehicle speed that we want to go, um, we just have to solve the equation for uh, two other variables, right? And that would be uh, the frequency that, uh, that that's sending to us um, and um, and uh, well, I guess that's it. I only have to solve for one, and then and the change the change of frequency from there. But using the using the math, um, and so it turns out that if I needed to to uh, to defeat X band radar and say that I'm going 65 miles an hour, all I have to do is transmit at 10.5 gigahertz. I don't have to do any kind of a special encoding. Uh, there's no packets. It is truly just a microwave signal at 10.5 gigahertz. Uh, if I would like to do the same to K-band radar, uh, which once again is the most commonly used radar in the world um, and the US, uh, all I have to do is transmit at 24.12 gigahertz. And that will return that I'm going 65 miles an hour. Um, if I would like to, so so KA is a little bit different. Um, it's it's a multi-mode transmission, but uh, believe me, uh, if you were to transmit at 33.8, uh, you're you're going to get away. Okay. Um, and and as I was doing the math here, I started to think, okay, remember my dad? You, you remember that story about the microwave? Uh, did that work? And it turns out it did. Um, if we would have had our microwave oven transmitting um, back in the day when they were using X-band radar, it, the cops would have seen that I was going negative 97 million miles an hour. <laughs> okay, raise your hand if you know where this is going. Yeah, all right. Well, here we go. So um, the interesting thing, though, is uh, so let's take that 65 mile an hour example. We, we have a little bit of a problem with that, right? Uh, so if I was always transmitting 65 miles an hour or if I was always transmitting at, at a certain frequency, I've already shown you that, that some of those frequent, they're, they're ranges, right? Um, and, and the calculation matters. Um, but, but really, the, the biggest problem is, is if I was always going 65 miles an hour, what happens when I go through a school zone? Right, um, and and we don't actually know what frequency the the police radar is sending. Well, friends, I gotta tell you, we live in interesting times. <laughs> so we live in the future, right? Uh, the world's information is at our hands right now, right? Um, and we can do with it as we please. Um, and the newer radar detectors, uh, specifically the Valentine 1 and the Escort 360, detect the radar signals about two to three miles ahead and via Bluetooth can share exactly which frequency we're being radared with. Do you understand? Okay. So real quick, I do want to give a shout out to TriWolf. Thank you so much for where you at. There she is for finding. She was able to find me a very consistent location to, uh, to uh, run some tests would be a good way. <laughs> Testing. Yeah. Perfectly legal. Official business. Okay. Oop. I went one too far. Okay. So all we need to do is we would just need to build an app that knew exactly what the current speed was, uh, the current speed limit, uh, using the, the uh, roads API, um, a way to detect what frequency that we're going to be radared in about two miles. Uh, the current generation of radar detectors do this. Um, and then uh, ca calculate the frequency of the speed that we wish to go based upon the, the current speed limit and transmit. 
right? Um, all we need is a very, very small processor to do this. Um, you know, up here I, I'm showing an ESP8266. We don't need much to do that. Um, the, uh, one, of the, one of the issues is that currently the, the common, commonly available SDRs uh, or software-defined radios that, that are available to us currently aren't, aren't working in that high frequency or, or microwave space, right? Um, so so they're, they're, they're actually much lower on the spectrum. But if you take a look at the hardware that it would take um, and, and just even the way that, that SDR is progressing, um, we could build this device very, very trivially for about 700 bucks, okay, uh, right now. And, that, and most, of that, most of that cost would be around the SDR, right, um, and the high frequency transmission. But, but, um, the FCC is, is not going to want you to do that. Um, so the FCC is very strict about radar jammings, and they've actually been um, illegal since uh, 1996. Um, that means that anyone that uh, that that uses or sells the devices, um, you know, could it could be a federal offense, right? Um, and and, and I, they they are serious about it. Um, um, and so, and, and not only that, like they're, they're so serious that you're not even able to, like they are so concerned about radar jamming uh, that you're not even able to advertise, um, right? So it's actually against the law to advertise radar jammers, not even just use or, or, or sell. Um, and so, and, and right now when you take a look at it, you know, a $700 device, it, it's really not that cost effective anyway, uh, yet. I mean, it'll get there um, and, and knowing the way that we can do this and, and when those devices become available, that's when you can make a, a good decision. All right. Um, so, so the FCC won't let us speed, um, you know, or let me be me. So l let's see. Um, what what other effective countermeasures uh, do are available to us? Um, and, and they're and they're the common things. They're the common things. But but the, if you have not used the radar detectors, the the, the current generation radar detectors, they're they're tremendous. So so earlier I I, I showed you how how that the 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 radio frequency uh, continues to scatter, right? It continues to go and it continues to bounce around. And the current generation um, of radar detectors are, are picking that up very, very good, about two miles, and, and Waze is, is really good. But the problem with radar detectors, the problem is that they suck when it comes to, to detecting laser, right? So you've probably heard that, that ra radar detectors today um, when, when you get hit with, with a laser, all you're going to do is that just tells you that you're going to get a ticket, right? Um, and, and, and most people probably feel like the, the cops are using laser anyway. Well, we'll slow down trigger because um, we've got some neat things to talk about. So the FCC doesn't even regulate the light spectrum. That's done by the FDA. So, so let's hear it for light. Come on, light. And it also turns out that, that these laser guns, they're very different than their RF cousins. Um, they, they use an eye finder to, to single out a specific target, okay? Um, and if, if you take a look at the picture I have here, you'll, you'll notice that, that there's two lenses, one for one that's uh, the, the transmit, that's the smaller lens, um, and then one to receive, that's the larger, and that'll be important here in a second. Um, and what's really interesting and what, what I love about laser is the officer has to treat it like a weapon. Uh, it has to be, they have to be stable, they have to point, they have to single out a target, and they have to find a reflective surface on your car to get a signal back, okay? Um, so generally speaking, what they're after is they're looking for those, for your headlights or your uh, license plate or those sweet, sweet, fancy, blingy grills, right? Um, and here's what an officer sees when they're targeting your car. What you can see in this video is you see an officer trying to, to get a lock on a car, um, and then the second one is a little bit harder to see when, when they do, okay? Um, but because laser is regulated by the FDA, lasers have to be a class one laser. That is the same uh, class as a laser pointer, Laser guns are laser pointers, okay? They have to be eye safe, which means that pretty much, uh, you know, the, the amount of reflected laser that's coming back to the police officer is very, very little. Okay. 
Also, um, because it's regulated by the FDA, they are restricted to the, the, uh, the actual frequency of laser that they can use. They have to use a, an eye-safe laser, um, and, and they, they have standardized on 904 nanometers. Uh, this is an invisible laser beam, um, but what's great about this is it's standard. There's one, and it's very weak, and we can buy them too. Now, another thing, uh, what does radar measure? Well, laser does not measure speed. Laser measures distance. Okay, super important slide here. Um, I'm going to give you guys time to write the equation down. Um, <laughs> Like if you, if, you know, if, if we have any math majors, you can, you know, kind of like tell people, you know, explain how this works. But speed is, is a, a result of distance over time. I saw somebody take a picture of that slide. <laughs> okay. Now, now the issue is that um, laser guns, uh, when, they, when they do measure distance, they're doing it at a rate that, that's, that's a, a very aggressive, usually around 100 to 200 measurements per second. Um, and so that really kind of goes back to, by the time your radar detector has gone off, um, the laser gun has already acquired your speed, um, and, and in fact, many times over, right? Um, and, and that's the calculation that the, 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 you know, the gun is using for distance. Um, but here's where it gets interesting. Okay, <laughs> here we go. All right. Whew. It turns out that in about two-thirds of our com country, um, represented by the green states that are super cool, um, laser jamming is perfectly legal. Um, the yellow states are not as cool, and I just literally don't know what the fuck is going on in Virginia. So we have a couple options. Um, this is the one that I'm going to go with. Um, it's not really effective, but it's hilarious, and it makes it very hard for the police officer to get a lock on my car. Okay, or, or, or we can attack the gun. Let's attack the gun. All right, here we go. So first we have to know exactly how these laser guns work. Um, and before we get started, I, I'm going to show you an example of timings. Okay, so the timings that we're going to talk about here will, will not be for every gun, but the frequency that we're using is. Um, and, and, what's, and what I want, to met, under, want you to understand is that once you understand how they work, you will understand how to attack every single one. It only comes down to a matter of timings, okay? So the things that are really important here um, are the pulse width, how long the laser is on, um, and the period cycle, which is how often it shoots. So in, in, in this demonstration, I show um, a, a pulse width, one, two, three, four, five, pulse, 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 pulse. Those are our pulse width, right? Um, and the period cycle of a five millisecond period cycle, okay? You'll understand here in a second. Okay, but... This part gets really important. Okay, so when the, when the gun sends a series of pulses, what it's expecting is a return, okay? And that return measures what? Does anybody remember? Booze. Booze. <laughs> distance. Distance. The pulse measures distance, okay? So when your car gets hit by the first pulse, does that officer have a lock on your speed? No. No. No, they only know how far away that car is. It's not until the second, third, right? You know, until they can start, that gun can start getting a lock on, on, uh, on your speed, right? And so that's why, why, the, why, the, uh, why, why they, they measure so many times in, in one second, 100, 100, you know, 100 to 100, 200 to get your speed. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and zoom into this pulse period and let's talk about some countermeasures. All right. So these red lines indicate pulses from the gun. Pulse, pulse, pulse. Okay, everybody good? All right. And, and, and it expects to get a return. Pulse, return. Okay. But we have a five millisecond window that we can return our own. Okay. And what does la laser measure? Distance. Distance. Okay. So it does not measure speed. Right? So if we were to return a pulse before the reflected one, we can tell them how far away we are. All right? So what I'm going to show you is a brute forcing method. So uh, just imagine driving around, knowing exactly which frequency you're going to be lasered with. It's always the same, 904, 
right? And every one millisecond, putting a pulse. Okay. So what, um, now the interesting thing is in, in your brain, I know where you're going because I went the same way as, well, if, if I turn, if I turn an, immediate re, an, an immediate response, am I telling the cop that I'm going 97 million miles an hour? No, no. What I'm telling them is that I'm very close, right? I'm 100 feet away. But then they get another one. He's 100 feet away. Then they get another one. He's 100 feet away. I'm going zero, right? Um, yeah. And so most of the guns, believe it or not, so there, there's probably, I don't know, nine or 10 different models of, of laser guns on the market. Uh, this method comes back with an error message. Just a simple brute force, one millisecond pulse will return an error message to the gun. Now, um, there are a few models uh, that, that have implemented countermeasures to countermeasures, um, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, so, so commercial, uh, so some of the, the, the newer guns, that what they will do is they will, they will recognize, I sent one pulse out and I got four back, right? So that's, that's not right. So they'll, they'll, they'll actually laser shift, right? like they'll shift their pulse width um, to, to account for that, to find an empty spot in, in, the, return, in the return signal. Um, but, but we can counter those too. Right? So once we understand how the gun laser shifts, what its expected result, we can shift our, um, our uh, response to that just as easily. Now what's interesting is because of, of the, the pulse width and the timing, we can identify the gun by the second pulse. So when we get it once and then we measure how long did it, you know, so then we move immediately into brute force mode, right? Um, then we receive another one. Now we can identify exactly which gun we're being targeted with and we can implement countermeasures from there. Um, and so I'll, I'll go th through those here real quickly. Um, so a countermeasure, so what you're seeing here on the screen, the red lines indicate a pulse from the, from the laser gun. Um, the, the, orange, uh, the orange indicates our reflection and the green is what we're returning to the gun. Um, so what we can do is we can vary our own returns. Right. So imagine if we if we understood that we have a five meg, five millisecond window to return. Uh, that the first time we we return a very early signal, we're we're at 600 feet away. Right. And then on that second pulse, we've identified who the gun is. We know that we know exactly which gun we're being targeted with, and we can move into we can move into countermeasures of that. But we we then say that we're further away, uh, perhaps uh, you know a thousand feet away. Now to that gun, we're going in reverse, right? And then we can continue on with, with strategies like that, that that continue to to even bypass even the most laser guns. Um, and commercial laser jammers are already doing this. There, there's a couple. There there is a couple different commercial uh, products that you, that you can purchase that are already that are already implementing uh, these countermeasures. Um, and so I just want to uh, let you know that those are available. Okay, so um, a, a few years ago, I released a, a, a tool called Kacha. It's an ESP-based uh, Wi-Fi hacking tool, um, and 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 you know, and, and basically, what what I've done is like, okay, let's let's build on that platform. Let's continue to stay with the ESP8266. Um, it's a build platform that that I'm very comfortable with. That uses the Arduino um, and the Arduino platform, um, and we can and and we can uh, build off of that. Well, so what I'm going to release here is, is Nachikacha. Um, and so, so what Nachikacha is, is an ESP8266 based um, laser jammer. Um, it's based on 12 volt circuitry um, for easy auto, automotive installation. Um, and uh, it uses on the same nine, uh, 940, uh, well, it should be 904, but um, it, ha it implements brute force mode, meaning that it's pulsing at, at a one millisecond pulse rate. Um, that will bypass 80% of the laser jammers um, that are in use right now. Um, it will not jam the, the more advanced Dragon Eye um, systems that, that, uh, that, that implement countermeasures to brute force mode. Um, however, um, you know, we're, we're doing this open source, right? And so um, because, because commercial, um, commercial jammers exist, um, it should not be. It shouldn't be too difficult for us to reverse engineer um, the, the pulse cycles that, that those more. Um, actually, I don't know if that's legal or not. Um, let's not do that. Let's build our own. Okay. Um, 
So um, wireless connectivity, Android app. Um, it's legal in some states, right? Remember those green states? Oh, I forgot to mention, I don't know if you saw that, but on that, that uh, map where, where uh, laser jamming was legal, Colorado wasn't on there. And I'm like, come on, Colorado, I thought you were cool. Like, I just can't. I don't know. Um, it also can la it can uh, emulate laser guns, so you can test uh, your your own. Uh, you, you can test it. You can you can test your uh, yeah your radar detectors, etc. Um, yeah, and and turns out MERT mode would work okay too, which would be uh, green lights, but that's a super bad idea, and probably probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, Okay, well, so I'm just going to tell you, like, not your conscious freedom, um, and this, this is how we, we can take control of, of any systems that, that are targeting us. Um, we, uh, hey, audio guy is going to get louder in a second, just FYI. Um, and I just want to say go America, um, except for Virginia, because I don't know what's going on there. Um, <laughs> Uh, so real quick, this is kind of what it looks like. A bill of materials, super simple. Um, we're looking at an ESP8266 and, and an LED array, essentially, and a 12-volt uh, circuit. Um, cost is eight bucks. Um, so, so code's available now. It's kind of janky, but that's how it goes, DEF CON. Um, and I actually meant to bring one. I, ha I have one here, um, but I broke it uh, yesterday when we were prepping for the talk. Um, Bill, I know, Bill, I know. <laughs> Um, so seriously, I, you know, so it is being released open source. Uh, the brute force mode works. Um, I, I, because I, I tested it. I live in Kansas, legal there. Um, and. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, really there's only round one. I'll continue to, to, to post code um, and I, I would really expect or I would really hope or and appreciate if anybody would like to, to help me build a, a, a fully open source uh, laser jammer that, that competes with, uh, with the commercial grade uh, equipment. Um, so with that, guys, uh, thank you very much. I, I had a great time. Um, really appreciate it.